Round nine. Middleweight battle between Doug DeWitt in the black trunks and Charlie Boston in the red. We're really heading into crunch time in a fight that has got to be close. DeWitt pursuing, but Charlie Boston doing what he has done for much of this fight, throwing flurries of punches, many of which are landing. And even on the inside there, we see Boston fighting pretty well. He likes the countering position there. Because DeWitt has been a little bit more wide open. You know, in the battle of the jabs, Dave, I don't think there's much Hunter, doubt that Hunter, Boston Hunter. has won that battle. Well, that's been a serious detriment to DeWitt. Swinging over the top. Mm. Not, I don't think, the kind of punching DeWitt wants. He's looking a little wild right now. Uh, if he can score in these instances, he can win the fight. But what seems to be happening lately is that he's coming over the top, missing. Boston doing a lot of holding. You know, you could have made a case somewhere in this fight for a warning or even a deduction from Boston for all the holding. Do you agree with that or no? It's been close. He could have done that. But I think that Perez has figured it's part of strategy. Yeah. He's been there, been a little bit closer to the action than you see in other fights, and broken them quickly. Well, there's the left hooks and the rights by DeWitt. It's been... I don't think Clayton on the part of Boston, so it would, would, it's a judgment call. Well, DeWitt, when he backed him in the ropes here, did some good work. Charlie trying to use that jab to keep DeWitt at bay, but this is not the posture Boston wants. Now you look at him hold. Okay, break. Now there you can make a case for a deliberate hold. There's the right by DeWitt. Charlie shakes his head and says, good punch. At times in this fight, it's like they've both done what they wanted to do. As you see Boston coming behind with the right hook. And DeWitt shakes his head like it doesn't hurt, but it landed a point. Okay, break. I think DeWitt would be much more effective if he would use his jam more. And in recent fights, it hasn't been there the same way. Because it not only leaves him open for countering, but I think it affects his own timing. Half a minute left to go in round nine, and what else? It's been a close one. All right. Fight, big crowd on hand here at Harris Marina, including some celebrities, Steve Rossi, Marty Allen on hand. They're opening up here in Atlantic City in the next few days. And uh, a packed house that has enjoyed this fight. All right, break. There is one more round to go, and as we head into Charlie Boston's corner, let's hear what they have to say. Okay, now, you got to knock this fucking guy out. This is the last round. Right, you got to show him, you got to stop him. He is dead. He can't hold his hands up. Maybe you think you're tired. He's more tired than you. Now you gotta, Come on, Charlie, you let it hang out. Charlie, reach down. You reach down for that reserve. Non-stop. you got to punch him. When you hit the okay, forget the cramp. Where's Let the it all hang out. Left Three arm. minutes, Charlie. Left side. Come on. Come on. Let it all this hang out. It. Baby. You this gotta knock him out the win. It's the only fucking round. Doug it loads Let's up go. the big gun here in the ninth, pushing Boston back. Left hook, top of the head. Right hand comes across very crisp punch, making Boston turn. However, it would not be that one-sided. DeWitt lands his left and right there. Boston came up and made a good exchange out of it. Seemed like DeWitt had his distance down pretty well that round. All right, we're headed for round 10. What looked like it might end early and disastrously for Charlie Boston in the first round when he was down and hurt has certainly not been that way the rest of the way. It's been a very, very close fight. Both fighters have shown a good ability inside as well as outside. Pretty good versatility. Okay, break, break. Well, we've come to expect that on occasion from DeWitt and Charlie Boston. In many, many respects, you have to like his effort tonight. And if nothing else, win, lose, or draw, good. Straight right by Boston. He's shown that it wasn't a fluke beating Davison. He's a good middleweight. Now, the accuracy of his punches has been good. He likes squaring up and coming from the side like that. He is wailing away on the inside with DeWitt. Showing lots of bravura and some confidence. Okay, break. 
This is a, this will be a decision if it goes to it that will leave a lot of unhappy people on one side or another. And I don't think a draw would be out of the question. No, the difference in this fight is going to be a subtle interpretation on a round that you can review again and again. For instance, will the judges like the bodywork of DeWitt? Right hook by Boston. I don't know if it hurt DeWitt. He was talking as it, after he got hit with it. It's very hard to hurt DeWitt. Looked like a pretty good shot, though. Yeah. Side headlock by DeWitt. Charlie Boston, I think, had a pretty good 10th round. If he wanted to finish strongly, and he did, he has succeeded so far. A minute left to go in this fight. Wild right again by DeWitt. Who has something left for this last minute? Boston ranked five by the WBA. DeWitt ranked sixth. Those rankings in some respects on the line, although you have to think with such an even fight, if they're five and six, they still ought to be five and six one way or another. Should not be too big of a drop. Even for the loser, half a minute left to go in round 10. And how did you guys score it? I would have, at this moment, DeWitt winning very, very slightly. All right. Well, I. Probably, I might agree. I'll, I'll tell you, I don't know. The second round could be key. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, it, this is so close that it's a, it really is a tough one to call. In any case, it's been a good one. That's it. Oh, let's hear it, ladies and gentlemen. Doug DeWitt, Charlie Boston. That picture tells it. They fought a good fight. And Dave, they fought like two young men who knew they had something to lose and something to protect. One more fight, maybe two, and they could get in a position to fight the number one contender. On the other hand, a bad loss, and you can drop out of the top ten. They yeah. knew that. They met in the middle, and an excellent fight. Good finish for Boston. The, the tenth round, I thought Charlie Boston fought extremely well. And whether that was enough to beat that man, Doug DeWitt, remains to be seen. But uh, as we look at DeWitt, it was a win that, as we said, he coveted because, among other things, he's trying to dispel the myth that he can't fight left-handers. Now, what's your feeling about the left-handed style? Does it still give him some trouble? I think he was his own worst enemy as far as not utilizing the jab tonight. And as we look at some action from the 10th round there, he's using lead right hands instead of that jab you're talking about. And Boston squaring up did a very good job coming from the sides, landing both punches very effectively. I thought DeWitt might try more right hand leads tonight against that southpaw style. He didn't seem to do it. And if he goes down, it will be because he loaded up too heavily. I think he started that in about the sixth round or so. He had that one good round uh, where he did land the good straight right hands, but couldn't come back with it later. Now, a good point that we, we should mention is if this is a draw in rounds, you have to think that round one would be maybe the only two-point round in the supplemental scoring system in this fight. There is a supplemental scoring system, as we outlined at the beginning of the show, a five-point system. And with that knockdown, I would think that'd be the only five-point, a five-three round. That should be. Really, as you see the fighters walking in the middle of the ring, not very much separating them in terms of talent. That is true. And you'd Very like to see them fight. fight somewhere down the road again. It would be interesting. And it tells you, I think, the fighters in the, in the middle of the top ten of the middleweight division, uh, you can maybe throw in the Sims in there also, fighters of that ilk, though he uh, did beat DeWitt, the Don Lees. These are all fighters that are pretty even. And uh, Michael Buffer finally has a decision. And let's go up to him right now, find out who won. Ladies and gentlemen, here at Harris Marina is the official scoring. Judge Frank Cairo has it five rounds to five. Judge Phil Newman has it five rounds to five. Judge Eugene Grant has it six rounds to four. For Doug DeWitt, we go to the points, ladies and gentlemen. 45-44 on the even rounds. The winner by unanimous decision is Doug DeWitt. So it was the knockdown in the first round, as we mentioned, on the supplemental point system. That man, Doug DeWitt, wins by the smallest.
smallest of margins. We will be back for a final word. Stay with us. Back to Top Rank Boxing. Those are our results. You saw Christy win in the controversial fight Henry used. Leslie Stewart survived a, a one tough round to beat Uriah Grant. And Doug DeWitt in a very, very close but unanimous decision over Charlie Boston. Uh, Al Bernstein here with Dave Bontempo. And Dave, the DeWitt win was a close one, and it showed really both fighters fought well. And they belonged where they were in the ratings, number five and number six, separated only really by the first round knockdown that DeWitt was able to get yeah. off. They fought with intensity, good action, and we would like to see what technical adjustments they might make next time. And it would be interesting to see a rematch of those two fighters. And as you said, the difference, the left hook in the first round that sent Charlie Boston down. Is Doug DeWitt off this win ready to contend for the middleweight title even six to months or a year down the road? Perhaps six months to a year down the road. I think he's got to hone the fundamentals a little bit more because in a title fight, they could come back to haunt him. You need the jab. You need all your punches, and he was loading up a little bit too much tonight. Okay, Dave, thank you for your comments tonight. I think it's been an interesting night of boxing. We hope that you'll be with us Thursday, May 15th, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific, from the Holiday Star Theater in Maryville, Indiana. Joey Ruiz, a junior welterweight from Chicago, against Brian Baronet, now fighting, fighting out of Philly. He is 29 and 2, 17 KOs, formerly a top-rated junior welterweight in the world. We'll also feature heavyweights Mike Evans and Andrew Stokes. That should be a good one. Top Rank Boxing has been brought to you by Bud Light, the light beer with the first name and taste. Everything else is just a light. And by Cooper Tools, the difference between work and workmanship. And by Rolades for acid indigestion or heartburn. Rolades spells 100% relief. So for Dave Bontempo, this is Al Bernstein saying so long, everyone. <laughs>